Hello, um, this is my pitch for my TEDx talk and um, I think I'd like to talk about uh, educational reform. Being a school principal, I'm working in Montessori school at the moment, but previously working in mainstream for over 15 years. Um, I've seen a great shift in the way that education is delivered and the effects it can have on the children who are graduating. Um, and really, it's really about the future, uh, really about looking at the problems we're facing at the moment as a world, as a globe, as a society and a civilization. And looking at a solution for that, and I see the solution for that sitting inside um, each and every classroom and every school in the country and uh, in the world. Um, really, it's a shift towards moving away from a standardized fact-based curriculum, which is one that we've all really gone through. Um, I'm moving towards a curriculum which is more geared towards still delivering the syllabus and doing everything that's required in terms of meeting the outcomes and indicators from the national curriculum, but really focusing on not the facts, because facts are easy now. You know, Siri, Google, uh, you know, they will tell you everything you need to know. It's really more using those facts as inspiration to then focus on the key skills, the elements that will uh, make the future generations thrive. And that's skills like collaboration, empathy, communication, time management, compassion, cooperation, um, and moving away from learning facts and listening to a teacher who is the oracle and tells you everything you need to know, and moving towards a short inspirational lesson where the teacher says, you know what, that's what I know. I don't know everything here. I'm just the bridge between you and the knowledge. Tell me what you'd like to know. And then the children move away to say, well, look, I'd like to know um, about dinosaurs. I need to know like, why were the Tyrannosaurus rex's arms so short? You know, why did the Brachiosaurus have such a long tail? And as the teacher not answer those questions, although I could, but say, look, I don't know the answer to those, but I'd love you to find out. Now, you can work in a group, a pair, you can work on your own, and you can represent your research however you want, but in a week's time, we're going to meet here and you're going to tell me everything you know about dinosaurs. Now, what happens at that point is every child in your class, in your group, goes away and they then work out who they're going to work with. Um, and maybe those groupings don't work and maybe some collaboration needs to happen, maybe some empathy, some compassion, communication. And those groups may shuffle around. They may fail. They may succeed. But in a week's time, what you'll have is a group of children who come back with uh, a piece of work represented in their own way. You know, some children might come back with a model, a poem, a dance, a drawing, a piece of artwork. You know, you're, the guy who comes back with his model every week, he will be an architect. The person who comes back with a dance, they'll probably be a creative dance instructor. But essentially, the children will find their niche. But along the way, they will develop key essential skills that will enable them to survive when they go into the real world. And that's the whole point behind a shift in the educational delivery is that if we can shift the, uh, the thought process behind what is a teacher, what does a teacher do in the classroom from an oracle who gives the information and you retain it, you get a grade A, to, hey, I'm just an, an inspirer, I'm just you know, the guide here. I will tell you where to go, but I can't tell you how to do it. And then we focus our assessment not on did you remember the facts, because that's dead, but did you use this set of skills along the way and how was that? Because essentially, if we want to survive as a civilization and as a human race, we need to start thinking differently. We need to start having leaders who have empathy, compassion, and all of these things that we're looking for in our leaders today, we need the future leaders to have them. And the only way to make sure they leave our primary schools with those skills intact is by emphasizing them and focusing on them in the classroom and giving the children a chance to use them, a chance to fail, a chance to learn from their mistakes. That's what we're looking for. And my whole pitch is around that shift, how we can do it, how it can happen, and to inspire teachers out there um, who are currently teaching in a way that's very old fashioned, 1950s standardized industry revolution teaching styles to moving towards uh, not a revolutionary style of teaching, but a more progressive style of teaching where teachers can say, okay, you can do that, and they let go. They let go and allow the children to run uh, with their ideas and then they reflect upon them. Uh, I hope you like it. Okay, and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Bye.